Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And tonight we're going to be talking about jerk baits, rip baits, whatever you want to call them, specifically fishing them in the winter time. A uh, couple of things I want to tell you right up front. First, tonight's entire video is going to be shot in Tim's garage, but our next video on Friday is going to have a bunch of underwater footage in it. We're going to show you exactly how these baits are operating underwater, how the fish behave with them, but it's really important that you get this information first. We want to talk about styles of baits, basic colors, how we're working them, and more importantly, why they're working. And then we'll tie that into the next video showing you that underwater footage and the bass's behavior. Now, if I sound a little bit hoarse, that's because in the last couple of videos, Tim and I were joking about standing in the ice cold garage. I stood out here too long, got myself a cold. So I'm a little raspy, you'll have to bear with me, uh, but I really wanna give you guys this information. So right off the top, why jerk baits in the winter time? The last handful of videos, we've been talking to you guys about finesse fishing, right? Recommendations for spotted bass or recommendations for cold water. And it's all either been really finesse or ultra slow swim baits, right? Kind of the two ends of the spectrum. Today, I wanna to talk to you about a bait that is a reaction bait, a moving bait. But the reason that, that it works so well in the winter when other reaction baits don't is because it truly triggers bass into feeding even if they're in a negative mood, even if they don't wanna feed, if you work it properly, you can trigger those fish and get them to bite. So I'm gonna give you some recommendations. I've got, what do I have here? Like four or five styles of baits uh, that we have a lot of confidence in personally. Maybe a couple color references. All that stuff, like always, gonna be down in the bio, uh, below the video, if you drop down the bio, we'll have links to all the products, color recommendations, some hook recommendations. Uh, but first, before we even go into the specifics of baits, I want to talk to you about cadence. Because when we fish these baits, these jerk baits, it's not like summertime. In the summertime, we're working these baits hard, right? One, two, three snaps, quick pause, work it again, quick pause. Very, very aggressive fishing. The winter is not like that. Typically in winter time, we're going to be going with really light gear. I'm going to be throwing this. I use both casting and spinning, but something in about the six, eight to seven foot one range uh, for both my spinning and for my casting. You wanna, that shorter rod so that you don't have too long of a tip section, because if you have a rod that's too long, normally we're long rod guys, we like those seven and a half plus footers. But for this presentation, if you have that long rod where the end really bows up, it's hurting the action of the bait. The bait movement isn't very crisp because you're loading the rod, so it pulls the bait. We want our action to be very crisp, very sharp, and then just dead stop in the water. Aggressive motion and then just paused. So the way that we'll work these baits is either one or two pops and then you stall. Now we fish braid to a liter, just like we do with everything else, but you can also do this with straight fluorocarbon something in the, depending on the bait, something in the six to 10 pound range, very, very light line. So you'll just rip and then just wait and wait and wait and then rip, rip and wait. Now it's very important when you do that pause, I truly want that bait dead in the water. So what I mean by that is I don't go rip and then reel up my slack. I rip and I kill it. I actually point my rod at the bait and I lay slack down on the water. I wanna see the coils laying on the water and I let it sit truly dead. And then as I start to reel up my slack, before the line goes tight, before the bait starts to move, I do my next snap so that it truly goes from dead still to sharp movement with none of this beginning to move in between. You don't want that. You want those sharp transitions and then dead still. To start, I would say a three second pause. So rip, rip, one, two, three. Rip, one, two, three. Really slow. But from there, if it's not working, you're gonna go even slower. Try five. If that doesn't work, go all the way to a 10 count. Now, why are we doing that? 
It's winter time. The water is cold. These fish do not want to move. So the colder your water gets, the longer the pause is. But what will happen if this bait comes in and it stalls and it sits there for two seconds, a bass will, will nose up to look. But if it sits there for 10 seconds, she has time to rise to that bait. This is true reaction. At that point, it has nothing to do with whether or not that bass wants to feed, whether or not she wants to eat that bait. If she's sitting looking at a bait that has been idle out of pure curiosity, and then it makes a snap movement, as you're going to see on Friday, it's pure reaction. It's just violence. They lash out. It's the way that a bass is designed to operate. So if you work that bait too quickly, they don't have time to get up to it. That's why you want those long pauses, sharp movements. So the fish has time to get there. Now, the specific baits are gonna have to do with how deep your fish are. The jerk bait works all the way through the winter unless your fish go deep. Because the deepest jerk bait that I like throwing in the winter is a Stacy 90. That's as deep as I go. I'm comfortable calling a fish if my water's clear out of about 12, 13 feet with that bait. Not much deeper than that. So once your fish go deep, you need to leave the jerk bait behind. But if they come into that range or shallower, you're in business no matter what temperature the water is. Now the way I select my jerk baits, one is gonna be the size of the bill. Like I said, the deepest runner is the Stacy 90, but I also select them by hook size. The only other thing I would add to that is number of hooks. Ideally, you're going to have a bait with three hooks. The Stacy 90 and the Pointer 78 Deep Diver, both of these baits just have two hooks, uh, but they're a small enough hook that you can set them on that light line. Because remember I said we're going with that shorter rod and really light line. If you're on six pound fluoro or eight pound fluoro, you can't put the screws to a fish on a big treble hook that's a 2X or a 3X hook. You just don't have enough backbone for it, enough strength for it. So you wanna go to a bait that's either two hook or three hook, and I would say a maximum of a size four treble. That's what's on the Stacy, or at least when I upgrade them, I end up with a size four. Uh, the flash pointer, we go to three hooks. They're a size six, I believe, either a six or an eight. I'll look that up for you. Uh, but that's how I choose. I want those baits that have those smallest trebles. So just the slightest pull, I can get the hooks in them. I don't have to hammer down like I'm using heavy, heavy gear. So the baits, again, from the top, my first choice is a pointer, a pointer, a Stacy 90. That's a Lucky Craft bait. Link to it's gonna be down in the bio. Don't worry about it. I'll give you some color recommendations, but generally clearer colors are better in the winter time. Uh, there are some exceptions. You do want one or two bright colors in your arsenal, but for the most part, ghost colors are where it's gonna be because those fish have time to rise to it. So that Stacy 90, then a Pointer 78, also a Lucky Craft bait. <clears throat> then the other ones would be, you know, your Mega Bass Vision 110, uh, absolutely a killer, killer bait. We throw a ton of that bait. That's another one that just, when you kill that bait in the water, it's just, it just sits there. Subtle, subtle movement, and then it stalls out. That's a great choice as well, plus you're running three hooks. Uh, now the hooks that come on that bait, some people love them, I tend to change them. So down, again, in the video description, I'm gonna link you, but my favorite jerkbait hook, bar none, is uh, it's a gammy hook. It's the Aaron Martin's finesse treble with the nano coating on it. That treble in a crankbait, I don't like it at all, but in a jerkbait, I absolutely love it. Uh, very minimal effort to hang them on that hook. Very, very sharp hook. And then when you get them on two or three trebles, those hooks are working together to keep that fish pegged so I don't have issues with them shaking off. Uh, but again, that Mega Bass is a great choice, though I generally change those hooks. And the Mega Bass, both the Vision 110 and the, I think it's called the Plus One, the one that goes a little bit deeper, are great choices. And then last will be that little Flash Pointer 100. Uh, that's a bait that I throw a ton. These are both Flash Pointers. Little tiny bait, 
Little tiny hooks. In fact, that one has stock hooks. This has those Aaron Martin's hook on it now that I'm looking at it. But these are baits that are extremely erratic, very violent movement, and then they just stall out perfectly. And you can play with your hook arrangement. You can get an ultra slow fall out of them if you want them to, to slowly get into that deeper water. You can change those hooks, get a little bit of rise. But generally, you want to be as close to truly stalled out, neutral in the water as you can get. Uh, trying to think what I missed here. We got our, I'll give you specific rod recommendations. Don't worry about that. The hooks, you want to get those changed. Uh, this is the actual bait that you're going to see in that video on Friday. There's a pointer 100. Now that video that we're going to be showing you, it's, it's underwater strike footage. And I mean like right up in your face, fish eating that jerk bait. Uh, we were throwing a pointer 100. Now water temp was a little bit warmer. That's why we were throwing that bait, two hooks, and we had upgraded trebles on it. And because we were pulling fish out of deeper water, we were actually putting a little bit larger hook on it. These are uh, owner size four, but they're three X trebles. So that we got a little bit of a sink out of that bait and we could get it down and then work with those fish and pull them up and get them to come up to the camera where you guys could see them. But you'll see that when that bait is idle, those fish come right in and they look at it. And when it snaps, they're on it. It's amazing how fast and how hard they can hit that bait. So I hope this helps you guys. You know, winter time again, we're talking about that slow finesse fishing, but there is absolutely a time and a place for a reaction bait. The jerk bait is one of those rare exceptions where you're still getting to work that bait, but you're working it in a way that is no longer trying to appeal to a fish. You're no longer trying to get them to want to eat it. You're actually playing with how a bass operates and you're triggering them and you're forcing them to eat it. And that is a rare, rare thing. And cold water is prime time to take advantage of it. Hope that helps you guys out. I know, you know, we've boomed the last, oh, two, three months. Our channel has grown a lot. So a lot of our viewers are brand new. To you guys, I wanna say, if you've gotten used to seeing us here in Tim's garage or in my living room, we also do a ton of on the water footage. You can see that stuff. You go to our channel, we have lists of playlists that we've put together. You wanna see giant fish on top water or you wanna see some underwater footage. You wanna see more big fish just getting pounded, big swim bait bites. All that stuff are in those playlists to get you through the winter, not just the educational video that you're seeing us do now. But again, hang in there for Friday. I think you guys are gonna love that video. We appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. Help us get to that 100K that we were talking about. We really appreciate your guys' support. We'll talk to you soon.